Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central. We're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video, and today we're going to talk about the new F5 Advanced WAF, or the Advanced Web Application Firewall. Uh, if you have seen some of our previous videos, we, uh, we did a series on the OWASP Top 10, talked about all the different security risks out there. Uh, the newest edition came out late 2017, and then, uh, and then we also did one on what is a web application firewall. So if you haven't seen those, maybe uh, check those out real quick. But I wanted to talk today about the specifics of the F5 Advanced WAF. Uh, so just to give you a, a quick little overview here, sort of a quick recap, if you will, um, on what a WAF is and maybe why you would need one. Um, let's say you have a client out there in the internet and that client wants to access your awesome uh, web application. So here's your web app over here. And before you're going to let that client get to your web application, you want to put a web, web application firewall um, in line so that any kind of request that comes in is going to have to pass through the checks, as it were, of the web application firewall. And then finally that, if things are good, then that will allow the web application, you know, It'll, it'll allow access back here. And you may have several applications or several servers or whatever it is. Uh, but like I said, today we're going to talk about the new F5 Advanced WAF. So I'm going to put Advanced Web Application Firewall. All right. So pretty much all firewalls, like, uh, or I'm sorry, all web application firewalls are going to are going to protect against things like that OWASP Top 10 uh, security risk and, and, you know, injection attacks and deserialization and, you know, all those different cross-site scripting CSRF, that kind of stuff. They're gonna they're gonna protect against those or the higher layer uh, like DOS attacks, like slow Loris and things like that. Um, so pretty much, if you get a WAF, it's gonna it's gonna you know uh, protect against those types of things. But the F5 Advanced WAF has some really cool uh, new features that uh, that maybe were not present in previous versions of our uh, web application firewall. So uh, so the first one that I'll mention is. Just like anything else that you uh, would come to expect from F5 uh, in terms of application delivery controlling capability, uh, our advanced WAF gives you that. So the, uh, I would just say the, the base, base ADC features are going to be there um, in our advanced WAF. I'll put a little box around this thing to clarify. All right, so the, the load balancing, the SSL offloading, those types of things, you're going to find those uh, capabilities in the advanced WAF. Um, another, another thing uh, that you'll find is layer, what we call layer 7 DDoS support. And layer 7 DDoS uses things like um, signatures, of course, uh, you know, things that the, the attacks that would come through at layer 7. This is kind of, a, uh, kind of an overview or a uh, comprehensive uh, layer 7 approach for any kind of DDoS attack that happens at that, at that uh, layer. So this is a kind of a, like I said, a comprehensive, um, you know, protection at that layer 7. So, uh, so that's DDoS mitigation type actions that are going to happen here. Uh, another one that's kind of cool is API security. So I'll write this down, security. API security is really uh, important these days. Man, everybody's got an API for everything these days, you know, kind of thing. And APIs can be just as vulnerable as anything else to these attacks and uh, security risks that are out there. So we, uh, we do some very specific things on our advanced WAF with respect to API security, um, whether it is a format validation for API calls, um, maybe schema validation, uh, protection at a parser level, um, HTTP method configuration, those are just some things that you can configure on the advanced WAF in order to keep your APIs uh, themselves secure. So, uh, so that's a really cool feature that we offer on our advanced uh, WAF. Uh, another one that I'll put is anti-bot mobile SDK. All right, so that's a big old long uh, term there. All right, the software development kit is the SDK. Uh, what this is, is imagine if you have a mobile client out here, so I'll just put, uh, you know, mobile user, and, you know, all of us have our mobile phones these days and, you know, mobile devices. Um, so let's say the mobile user wants to access your web application, and, you know, you're, you're, of course that access or that request is going to come through the advanced WAF. Um, one of the interesting things is that a lot of mobile apps that you would download uh, don't support JavaScript. 
And so it's hard sometimes for a web application firewall to figure out, hey, is the mobile client acting uh, as a bot to try to attack your web application uh, because it doesn't, the, the app that it may be using to launch a bot attack doesn't support JavaScript. And one of the primary ways that we test to see if it is a, uh, you know, like a human user versus a bot or, you know, one of these automated attacks is to inject JavaScript and do kind of a JavaScript, uh, uh, you know, check on it. So what we have done at F5, we've teamed together with another company uh, where we have said, hey, we can give you this anti-bot mobile SDK and through a series of checks and cookie validation, um, you know, some, some other established trusts that we can, that we can uh, put together, um, you can actually check to see if a mobile client or a mobile app is being used in a bot attack against your web application and we can do that without the need for a JavaScript, uh, you know, check and validation. So, um, so anyway, so that's a really powerful thing uh, where you don't, uh, you know, you, you can check to see if these mobile apps are being used uh, against your web application in the form of a bot attack. So really powerful stuff, anti-bot mobile SDK. Um, another one that we have is this, uh, this thing called DataSafe. DataSafe is awesome because what it does is it actually injects JavaScript, so talking about JavaScript, it injects JavaScript back here on the client. So let's say, uh, let's say you're a client, and for me, I'm accessing this web application, and maybe it's got a form field for username and password, let's just say for example. So if I go in there and say, hey, you know, I'm username John, password, you know, password, whatever, then, uh, then what this is going to do is the web application firewall is actually going to inject JavaScript back into my client browser, and some of those HTML form fields um, are going to be able to be obfuscated or even encrypted. Uh, in fact, we can even change the name of the field, and we can really start to mess around with what would be an attacker's, you know, um, uh, you know, vector against trying to get to either some of my some of my uh, login information or whatever it would be. So, uh, kind of along those same lines, an attacker, what an attacker might do is load up some kind of malware on your client browser, where as I'm typing in my username and password, it's going to keystroke log uh, that data. So as I'm typing in John and then password, it's going to be logging that stuff. Well, with uh, data safe, what our advanced web application firewall does is again, it injects JavaScript, some JavaScript back into the client. And by the way, you can configure this, but it injects it back into the client browser <clears throat> so that as I'm typing my username and my password, it obfuscates the, uh, the actual data that I'm typing in. Um, and then beyond that, you can even encrypt it. Uh, like I said, you can change the form fields and those types of things so that the attacker then uh, if, if the attacker does actually log those keystrokes, then they're not going to see John and password. They're going to see some crazy, uh, you know, <laughs> jumbled letters and numbers and all that stuff. So it's a, it's a really powerful thing um, that if, even if your client doesn't have, you know, the capability to say, hey, I'm, I've got this keystroke logger, we're going to protect you nonetheless. So uh, really, really powerful stuff, uh, data safe. Another one that I'll put, I'll just start writing some more up here, uh, behavioral behavioral, uh, it's, it should be a B, behavioral DOS. And then the behavioral DOS support is actually now unlimited. So that's the key feature here. We've had behavioral DOS on some of our previous versions of our web application firewall, the, the application security manager, um, but it was limited in how many virtual servers you could put that on. Now you can do behavioral DOS unlimited. So basically what this does is it, it watches uh, behavior from a client perspective, um, coming you know, back to access your uh, web application via the virtual servers and all that kind of stuff. And so it keeps track on, hey, this one client is not good, this other client is, is good, et cetera. And so it, might, it, uh, you know, it, it, it analyzes that behavior. And if it starts to see that there's a DOS attack happening from a certain client, then it's gonna be able to shut that down. Um, again, you used to only be able to put that feature on a couple of different virtual servers at a time, but now you can do it unlimited if you have the advanced web application firewall. Uh, so that's a cool thing. I'm going to put uh, the next one is upstream, upstream signaling, signaling, okay. Upstream signaling is really cool because what this thing can do, what the advanced WAF can do is it can, again, it can start to notice the behavior and analyze the behavior 
of, uh, of different clients, or maybe, maybe there's a bot attack happening from a, you know, a DDoS type attack perspective. And what this can do is it can start to signal and automatically route the traffic um, back to what, what we have is called Silverline. And Silverline is a service that offers all kinds of great DDoS mitigation and other security features uh, that help keep your web application secure. So what uh, upstream signaling can do is the advanced web application firewall is gonna notice that crazy things are happening and it's gonna say, hey, we need to automatically route now to the Silverline service. Uh, all the traffic needs to go through Silverline and then back through to the web applications um, and because you know, it knows that, hey, we're under attack right now or, or uh, you know, that type of thing. So maybe, maybe, for example, you take advantage of the Silverline uh, DDoS scrubbing capability. So if you're under a, an active DDoS attack, then all the traffic goes through Silverline and then it scrubs it all and it only lets the good stuff through. But this is, a, uh, this is an automatic thing that it can do for you. So upstream signaling is, is, uh, is really cool. Um, the next one I'll put is credential stuffing. Credential stuffing. And that's not great penmanship. And then I'm going to put DB. So we don't do credential stuffing, but we do have a credential stuffing database. And this is really, really cool because um, if you know anything about credential stuffing, we actually have a light board on it. So you get out there and check it out. But essentially what it is, is you have an attacker who may have attacked one web application on the internet, like, you know, Yahoo or whatever. Yahoo's a good one because it, it got attacked not too long ago and every single uh, credential got stolen. So let's say that you as a user have your username and password that you use on Yahoo, but then you come over here to this web application and you use the exact same username and password. Well, what attackers do is they know that they know that behavior. And so if they have stolen your credentials from Yahoo, they're going to try to stuff those same credentials into this web application or many others. And, uh, and then they're going to try to get in that way. And the fact that you reuse your credentials over and over allows them to have success with that, uh, with that approach. So what this credential stuffing database is, is we have a threat uh, intelligence uh, stream that comes in that tells us, hey, these are all of the stolen credentials that are out there on the dark webs and all the deep places that people don't like to talk about on the internet. And, uh, but we know about these. So, hey, all of these credentials are the stolen compromised credentials that could be used in a credential stuffing attack. So credential stuffing database now resides here on the advanced web application firewall. So now imagine if you're a client accessing this web application and our advanced web application firewall says, hey, John, you are using credentials, the exact credentials that we already know about that have been stolen and compromised and they're out there for sale on the deep dark web. So you may want to change your username and password on this thing and you may want to stop using those credentials. So that's a really, really cool alert mechanism and tool that we have that we can start to alert your your users to say, hey, this is, uh, this is not good. You know, you're using stolen, you're using credentials that have been stolen, I should say. So that's, uh, that's really, really cool. And then the last one that I'll put is proactive bot defense or proactive bot defense. All right, the cool kids say PBD, PBD, proactive bot defense. What this is essentially is Again, bot attacks are, are, uh, are popular, they're extremely powerful, they're not a good thing, and we want to uh, protect against those things. Uh, effectively, what proactive bot defense does is it starts to analyze the, uh, the behavior of a client, and it says, hey, you are starting to act more and more like a bot, or more like a bot than we feel comfortable with as it turns out. And so we are going to maybe rate limit you a little bit, or we are going to apply various signatures to you, or we're going to do certain things to you to keep you from, uh, from really getting crazy in terms of the way that bots would act. <clears throat> and we try to get in front of that so that before you ever have a chance, you being the potential bot out there, before you ever, ever have a chance to really do, do, to, do, uh, to do harm or do damage to our web application, we're going to shut you down. So. Um, again, the effect of proactive bot defense is we stay ahead of this and we say, hey, we're going to shut you down before you really get, get out of control. So, uh, so anyway, so these are, I know I've gone over several things here today, but these are several key features of the advanced web application firewall that F5 now has. So again, you could deploy 
a web application firewall and it could do the standard OAuth top 10, standard you know, layer seven um, attacks, those types of things. Or you could deploy the advanced web application firewall and get all of this stuff uh, and really, really keep your web application secure. This, these are some, uh, some very powerful features. So, uh, so I, I hope you've learned a couple of things here about uh, the F5 Advanced WAF. And uh, hey, if you like this video, you can click on the DC ball here and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we will see you guys out there in the community.